I was in complete denial. Point to ears. If she did, she might be dead. Maybe mate vibes. Maybe. In her shriveled heart. Welcome back to part two of the Throne of Glass reading vlog. This vlog features Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire. I absolutely loved Crown of Midnight. Air of Fire, not as much as Crown of Midnight. I gave Crown of Midnight five stars. So I have a lot to say about these two books. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Here it is. And then we go on to Crown of Midnight. So she's living in the palace and she's doing all these jobs for the king. Um, however, She's not killing the people she's supposed to be killing. I think like the first half of the book is just kind of like relationship building and her going off, supposed to be doing what she's supposed to be doing for the king, but actually what she's doing is agreeing to fake people's death um, if they leave immediately and never use their name again so that she can pretend that she's killed them. <laughs> and she like gets some dead bodies from somewhere and she'll take body parts back to the king. Um, so she's faking that. And then there's this other group um, that the king is trying to get hunted down and it's this group that's working against the king um, and they claim to have found the heir of Terrison who supposedly died and in the like historical records this person this person died so but they're saying that they think she's alive you don't know at the time but you later find out that like basically someone in this group has arranged to have Nehemia killed so Nehemia gets killed. I was in complete denial. I was like, nah, she's not dead. This is all a setup. She's pretending. They're pretending. Like, there was a fake body. It's not really her. She's not dead. For some reason, I thought she was in on it and she wasn't actually dead. And they were just trying to rile up Selena to get her to take action. <laughs> um, but no, she's dead. They killed her. Um, the chapter where it, there's a chapter after she's died where it basically goes to this slave girl. Um, I think in Calcutta, who's like one of their people and she's like kind of thinking it's fine I can do this I can survive this I I know about this of this rebel group I know about Nehemia she's gonna she's gonna save us all kind of thing and then she gets the news that she's died and she basically loses all hope it's just like this one little part and it was like so gut-wrenching this random character who you don't even know and yeah she's basically lost all hope she starts listing off the people that she knows that have been killed or died from being in these slave camps and then she adds her name to the end of the list and kills the overseer that's watching it and then that's it that's all it was and it was just so effective i think it was like at that point that i was like okay yeah Okay, if she did, she might be dead. And then Selena is obviously absolutely gutted. Selena turns against Cal, like, because he knew about the threat to her, to Nehemia's life and didn't tell her. But that was also all part of the setup to turn her against him, but it worked anyway because she figured out she can't trust him. Um, and basically she turns on him when she finds Nehemia's body and she tries to kill him. And the only reason he isn't dead is because... Prince Dorian, that's the one, uh, Prince Dorian has magic and he uses his mind and he stops her from killing him and she notices it but no one else notices because he's recently just discovered that he has this magic. Magic is outlawed by his father the king uh, so he's like bricking it like I shouldn't have magic, why do I have magic, I'm gonna get killed. <laughs> so he's trying to keep his magic secret but he can't control it. So much happened in this book. It was so good. It's like 400 pages and it was just packed. It was so good. Anyway, she eventually like figures out who's responsible for Nehemia's death and she ends up, I think he comes to the castle and they're down in these tombs again and she opens up, oh, she opens up a portal to another world thinking she can talk to Nehemia and Basically, this other creature comes through the portal. It ends up in this room with this creature, her dog, she's got a dog, and the dog gets injured. Um, and then Cal, Dorian, Dorian gets notified by like the fair king in a dream that Selena needs his help. So he goes and gets Cal, they both come down, and then there's the bad guy 
from the rebel group whose name I have forgotten. And they're all in this room with this creature and Bad Guy runs off. Dorian's trying to get Selena to leave with him um, so they can go find another book to close the portal because the bad guy ran off with the spell book. And then the creature grabs the dog and take, run, takes it through the portal. So Cal runs in after it to save her dog. And then she knocks out Dorian and runs in after Cal. So she runs through this portal and she transforms. Pointy ears. She's a fae. She's a fae. And I was just like, oh my god. I was so excited. Yeah, she's like battling this beast and then they both get back through the portal. Portal closes. They, they manage to use Dorian's magic to close the portal. So then they have to explain to Cal, oh yeah, he has magic by the way. And it was so good, it was so good. Um, and then Cal's a little bit naughty and kind of arranges with the king to have her sent away. And apparently there are still fae about, I believe. So Cal somehow arranges with the king to have her shipped off on another mission, um, but to this area where she could basically escape and be safe and protected, um, which obviously she's not gonna do because, oh, I forgot to mention, there's this whole like underlying plot where there's these things called weird keys and there's three of them. And if you have all three, you can open the weird gate. I don't know what that does. The king, he has at least one of these keys. And he is the person, possibly even two, he's the one that's got rid of magic basically. The reason there's no magic in the world is because he's suppressed it, but he still has magic. So King's a big bad guy, King's trying to have ultimate power, and he's presumably trying to find all three of these keys. Um, and it's not going to be good if he does. So she is not going to escape because she needs to fix this now. And she has promised Nehemia, made an oath to Nehemia on her grave that she will she will free her people and she will sort this all out. So she's not gonna run. <laughs> she leaves some stuff in her room and before she leaves him, she whispers a date in his ear. And then she leaves, she gets on the boat and she goes, and he goes back to her rooms and he sees some books that weren't there the other day. And he starts rooting through them and the, he finds the date. And um, basically it's talking about the last king and queen of Terrison. I think they're descended from the Fae and their daughter, this princess who is dead. But then it's like basically that her mother and father were found dead in their bedroom. And that their daughter, they think the assassin came back the next day for their daughter. And that they never found a body and the body must have been chucked in the river. And then he remembers that she told him that her parents were killed in their bedroom and she was like in bed with them, their dead bodies, and then that she was found almost dead on the banks of the river uh, by the Assassin's Guild. And basically she is the lost heir. <laughs> so she is fair. She is the lost heir to the throne. Oh, I'm so excited. So, uh, I have a bigger TBR that I'm supposed to be reading, but um, I just want to carry on with this. Next read. This is a long one. It's like 560 pages, but I am so excited. I'm, I can't wait. I'm gonna, so yeah, I'm gonna start this and I'm gonna try reading it. And also, there's a, I think there's a read along for these Throne of Glass books going on at the moment. I'm trying to catch up. They're currently on Air of Fire. So I'm gonna try and catch up and see if I can, like, watch that live show. I'm having so much fun reading these books. They are so good. They're, so, they're just fun. They're so much fun. Um, so I'm gonna carry on reading this and uh, I'll update you. Hopefully, I'll remember to actually update you while I'm reading the book. Okay guys, so I just thought I'd update you on my reading of Air of Fire. Uh, I have about 100 pages of this left. I think it's about 20% of the book uh, left to go. And things are starting to heat up. I've not enjoyed this book as much as Crown of Midnight so far. 
like crown of midnight was just top for me this book is it it feels slightly disjointed just because the characters have now been split up in this book so selena has been sent off to Wendelin. uh dorian and kale i finally i looked up how to pronounce his name <laughs> mainly because i saw the word chaos in one of the books and i was like chaos kale <laughs> and i just like something just clicked and i was like wait a minute and so i looked it up the pronunciation it's kale not cow <laughs> um, and it is nehemia not nehemia kale and dorian are still in adeline selena has been shipped off to wendelin uh she's now met up with this fair warrior called rowan um i do like him i do like rowan i wasn't sure at first but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much enjoying Rowan at the moment. I don't know, I'm getting maybe, maybe mate vibes, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So we've now met Aileen's cousin, Adian, uh, and he's kind of hanging out with Kale and they have joined forces. Kale and Adian are trying to figure out how the king did his spell to remove magic from the continent. In the meantime, Selina is over in Wendelin, training with Rowan, learning how to shift into her fair form and learning how to use her magic. And then we've had introduced another group of people. Uh, we've had the witches introduced. So we have the three witch clans who have been brought to the Ferian Gap in the mountains by the king. Uh, and he's basically said to them they have a load of wyverns that they've been training and he wants them to take to the skies on these wyverns and assist him in some way we don't quite know what yet but basically he's made an agreement that if he if they help him uh, and they ride the wyverns then after he's done whatever he's planning on doing they can keep the wyverns and they can return to their home um, and try and take it back the witch's motivation for helping the king is that they're gonna get these wyverns as a reward and they're going to be able to go home and take back their home. We're between three different POVs at the moment. So we have Selina and Rowan in Wendelin, we have the witches in the mountains and then we have Kale, technically kind of four POVs. We have Kale and Adian and then we have Dorian who is learning about his magic and he is currently seeing one of the healers and she's making him potions to suppress his magic so that no one figures out that he has magic. So four POVs really. So we're kind of floating between all four throughout the book. So it is kind of a different vibe because all the characters are split up and we're going back and forth. But I'm pretty sure that we're getting all this information for a reason and there is a reason why we're seeing all these different POVs and hopefully the next book will be a bit more pulled together. I finally met a Braxos. I've seen the name of Braxos thrown around. I've seen people go on about how much they love a Braxos, but I didn't know who or what a Braxos was until reading this. Um, and a Braxos is Wyvern. He was a bait beast. So he was just used to help train the other Wyverns that were much bigger and stronger than him. But Manon, who is one of the heirs to one of the witch clans, has taken Abraxos under her wing because he defeated one of the larger Wyverns. So she has been trying to train Abraxos and I absolutely love him. He is so adorable. Oh my gosh. The bit where he has his first flying session um, and they go soaring above the clouds. I absolutely, I welled up. It was so cute like just the description i can't i can't remember where it was and this will be why people tab their books okay i found the part with abraxas um so she's got him in the air he is flying and he's gaining altitude um, and it says abraxas enjoy our rage off for the hell of it gripped clawfuls of snow and ice and set them scattering behind the sun lighting them up like a trail of stars the sun was blinding as they hit the open sky, and there was nothing around them but clouds as massive as the mountains far below, castles and temples of white and purple and blue. 
and the cry that Abraxas let out as they entered the Hall of Clouds as he levelled out and caught a lightning-fast current carving a pathway through it. She had not understood what it had been like for him to live his entire life underground, chained and beaten and crippled until when? Until she heard that noise of undiluted, unyielding joy. Until she echoed it, tipping her head back to the clouds around them. They sailed over a sea of clouds and Abraxas dipped his claws in them before tilting to race up a wind-carved column of cloud. Higher and higher until they reached its peak and he flung out his wings in the freezing fin sky, stopping the world entirely for a heartbeat. And Manon, because no one was watching, because she did not care, flung out her arms as well and savoured the freefall, the wind now a song in her ears, in her shriveled heart. I loved that bit. I loved it. Also, Manon, who is like not meant to be caring, she's supposed to be this ruthless, like awful <laughs> witch. Um, the way she seems to care for Abraxas and just the experiences she's having with him, so cute. I I think I mentioned this previously. One of the chapters in the other book that like really got to me was after Nehemia had died, and it went to Calcutta, to one of the slave girls. Um, it's referenced back to that. She started the uprising and the king has then gone in and sent soldiers in and killed everyone in Calcutta. And because that wasn't enough for him, he's also gone and taken soldiers to Endeavour and killed everyone in Endeavour. So all the thousands of slaves that were in Calcutta and Endeavour are now dead. This book is so depressing. Like when it got to that bit, I was just, I was crying. It's, oh God, I can't, there is no words. Um, and then when they told Selena and she realized she's failed Nehemia because she promised her that she would free her people and she has failed to free both her own and Nehemia's people. She wanted to save all the slaves in Endeavour and now they're all dead. And all the slaves in Kaipoa are dead. He's killed thousands. He's just slaughtered them, butchered them. I hate him. I hate the king. Someone needs to, like, get this guy gone, like, now. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'm now towards the end of the book and shit has just hit the fan um, over in Wendelin with Selina and Rowan. In one of the previous books, there was the beast... Um, that she found down underneath the library near the clock tower uh, and they've just discovered that there are several of those that have been transported over to Wendelin by the king and also like a huge army of like 200 soldiers. They're about to attack the Demifay in Mistward and Selina and Rowan have been setting up all these traps and defences um, on the road up to where they're based but they've been betrayed and the army and the creatures have somehow avoided all of the traps. The three creatures are now outside of Mistward and the army have somehow found the escape tunnel that they were planning on using underneath the complex. So the army are coming in through their escape tunnel and the creatures are at the front gates and Selina has gone out alone to use her magic against the creatures and try and hold them back from getting through this gate as far as long as possible. Rowan is inside trying to help the not very well trained demi fae that he deliberately put near the escape route because they weren't good fighters <laughs> who have now who are now being cut down by the soldiers that have come by the escape route. And I just got past the part where Rowan sees Selena fail basically, and get attacked by the creatures of darkness, which we have also discovered are actually the Valg. And the king has released them and put them into these weird bodies that used to be men. So the Valg are now back in this world in another form, um, and they have Selena, and Rowan's just seen her fall. And I, I, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to her right now. Like, I'm hoping she's still alive. I'm assuming she's still alive because, you know, there's four of her books. But 
they could we could have a character swap maybe she isn't maybe she, i don't know at the moment i am unsure of selena's fear and it has just switched perspectives again back to adelan so i'm kind of like what what happened to selena hello please is selena okay <laughs> so i'm gonna carry on reading this and find out what is going on Hello, I am filming off of my phone because I do not currently have a empty memory card for my camera. I am very near to the end of this book and I am terrified. I don't want to turn the page. I don't want to read the next bit. Um, I've just got near the end. I've got to the part where Kale and Adrian have been making plans for Dorian and Sasha to leave with them. And they've just been summoned by the king and then Dorian has like run to Sasha and said like we need to leave now and then someone's come in and gone I don't think so and like all these weird soldiers these weird unrecognizable outfits have come in and basically they've all just been rounded up and the king is smiling <laughs> I don't want to read the next bit I'm scared I'm so scared about what's gonna happen. Also, the whole freaking bit with Selena and Rowan was just, mwah, like, yes, I'm so happy. Like the whole, the whole thing when she used his power, and then after that, when she made the deal with Maeve. Yes. So happy. Uh, but yes, terrified to read the last bit of this book. Wish me luck. Okay, so you'll have to excuse the terrible lighting in here, um, but I have just finished Air of Fire. I've come upstairs to talk about it because I don't want to talk about it in front of Andy because I really want him to read it. He's currently reading the Akatar series and he's enjoying it, so I think he will enjoy this. I'm, I'm, I'm sad. <laughs> I knew, I knew as soon as like everyone was being rounded up and the king was grinning that <laughs> bad things were going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I must admit, what has happened, I was not expecting what it was, like, uh, <laughs> I was not expecting it to be what it was, like, um, Dorian, <laughs> Dorian, I'm not happy. First, Adian throws himself under the bus, well done, Adian, for no reason, and then the actual person who the king knew about was Sasha, who we didn't know about. Uh, and then, stupid Kale gobbing off at the king. One idiot. Why, why didn't he just keep his mouth shut? As soon as Darian used his magic to save Kale, I was just like, no. No, you didn't just do that. Just let Kale die. <laughs> That's awful. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> I'm not happy. I didn't want anything bad to happen to Dorian. He's so sweet. I'm assuming Dorian is going to be taken over by one of the Valg now. And I'm like, I'm just thinking ahead here, but presumably there's no going back from that. And presumably Selena's going to have to kill Dorian. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking ahead, I'm like, is she gonna have to kill him? She's not gonna be able to do it. Unless she doesn't know it's him. 
and Kale just freaking ran out and left him. <sighs> and Adian thinking that Kale's so important to Helena and she's like not even bothered about him now and she's taken off her ring. Oh my gosh. She would have rather had Adian than Kale. Like how could he think that Kale was more important? I'm annoyed. <laughs> Oh, I'm gutted. I am so gutted about Dorian. I'm happy about Rowan. I'm gutted about Dorian. But even then, she's left Rowan behind. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to have a little chat with me in the comments below. And I will see you next time.